Did you know that multi-stage rockets were invented as early as 14th century? This unpronounceable beast is the first known example of a multi-stage rocket, and the reason it had multiple stages was just to release multiple smaller rockets from the booster, but it still showed the possibility to split the rocket mid-flight, intentionally. And while using staging to create cluster ammunition is definitely a use case, staging has a much greater potential if used to improve the rocket's range. To understand how, let's take a look at a simple rocket with fuel tanks, engines and a payload. As the fuel is used up, we start to see that some of our tanks are just dead weight, so let's throw them away. We can also notice that since we don't carry as much fuel and have just a single tank, our total weight is significantly less, meaning we don't need as much thrust. So we can go ahead and throw away some of our engines too. Because we won't have to use our energy to accelerate this discarded mass, the rest of our rocket will go further, which is measured as delta V and represents how how much we can change the velocity of our payload. And if we now attach our boosters back to the main body, we can see that we've built a two-stage rocket and also shown why it will achieve higher delta V. But if two stages is better than one, would three stages be better than two? To figure this out, we can look at the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, which describes the maximum delta V that can be achieved by a single-stage rocket. Let's break it down a bit, and the first term is the effective exhaust velocity, which describes the engine thrust per unit mass flow of propellant. Effective exhaust velocity can be broken down into engine-specific impulse times standard gravity, so effective velocity and ISP both describe the engine's efficiency, just in slightly different definitions. Next, we can break down the total mass into structural mass, which includes tanks and engines, fuel mass, and payload. Now, the more fuel we add, the more storage we need for it, the more engine power we require, and for this reason, the structural mass is equivalent to the fuel mass times the structural coefficient. The same relationship is sometimes described as wet-to-dry ratio, and for this video, we'll assume that it's a constant equal to 19.5, which is similar to the first stage of Falcon 9. Now we can merge everything into a single equation and solve it for the mass of fuel. From there we can derive the structural mass and the total liftoff weight. This is the solution we get, but I'll do a couple more steps which will help to interpret the results. First of all, it's curious that the fuel mass and consequently the total vehicle mass grows linearly with payload size. This kind of suggests that you can split your rocket into smaller ones and it'll be the same, but unfortunately the engine efficiency as well as the structural coefficient would change and, spoiler alert, not in your favor. What's also curious is that because our structural coefficient is positive and the value in brackets is greater or equal than zero, then as we increase our delta V requirements, at some point our denominator would become zero. And no, this is not an error. If you assume your engine efficiency and structural limits as constants, then there's just a finite amount of delta V that you can achieve within a single stage. If we were to plot the rocket launch mass as a function of the delta V requirements, we can see that it grows very fast as it approaches that limit. This is even better seen if we switch to logarithmic view. There's a straight line representing the exponential growth, but if you get close enough to the limits, the function starts to grow a lot faster and shoots off into the infinity. Remember this fact, it'll be important later. But what would happen if we now make a two-stage rocket? While the Tsiolkovsky equation doesn't work for a multi-stage rocket as a whole, it still works for every stage individually, just that when calculating the fuel requirements for lower stages, we'll have to add the mass of upper stages to the payload mass. So if we have the delta V requirements for each stage, we can easily calculate the entire rocket mass by going top to bottom, and this works for more than two stages as well. But how to optimally split the delta V requirements between stages? Surprisingly, if all your engines have the same ISP, you just have to divide the delta V requirements evenly between the stages. And if we now plot the same graph as before for different stages, we notice that all lines initially grow exponentially, but as each rocket approaches its limit, the growth switches from exponential to Jesus Christ into the infinity. 
but for multi-stage rockets this happens later, in fact proportionally later to the number of stages. So when trying to find the optimal number of stages, there's always this minimum count to avoid dealing with post-exponential growth, but as far as the exact number goes, you can choose whatever you want. It's important to note though that in real life staging doesn't come for free. It adds additional weight, but that weight is surprisingly negligible if you keep the stage count within reason. The real drawback of staging is the complexity factor. Each new staging mechanism is a potential point of failure. The staging itself might break, the engines can fail to ignite, and so on. Then again, in real life you also don't have infinite engine choices, and sometimes you accept these risks to use an already existing and thus proven engine solution, and save on development costs. This is the reason why we see rockets range from 2 all the way to 5 stages for the same task of bringing something to low Earth orbit. One final thing to cover is what if the engine ISPs do in fact change from stage to stage. This is actually extremely common for rockets that start in atmosphere, as you can optimize lower stages for better thrust in dense atmosphere, while upper stages can exploit the reduced ambient pressure for better efficiency. But how should you split the delta Vs between stages? Unfortunately, unlike with the simplified example above, the results can vary wildly. Tweaking the engine efficiencies even a little bit can result in huge changes in the distribution. After all, this is rocket science, so there isn't always a neat solution. In real life, the exact optimum can be found with lots and lots of computer simulations, but for all my KSP enjoyers, I'll make a separate video where I'll explain my method of designing rockets, so see you there!